Good evening, lords and ladies. Welcome to the next episode of Vampire. It is Lord Winston here. Now, let us begin. We need to locate the old morgue. But before we do so, we may as well take a moment to converse with some people. Hello there. Good evening, guys. Good evening, Doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. Are you well? Do you need medical help yourself, nurse? I'm fine, really. I just need to sleep. How is the staff holding? How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Hmm. Why does Milton dislike doctors? I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned. Milton is not the chatty type. Why is he so grumpy? Why is Milton grumpy? on a daily basis. Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Hmm. He's not very well liked then. Your relationship with him? Pepper, I know you're very close to Milton Hooks. Yes. Milton Hooks is my man. If you want to report me for that, just feel free, Doctor. I have no intention of reporting you, Nurse Hawkins. But are you aware of the risks? The rules say I won't be allowed to work as a nurse anymore. But here at the Pembroke, we break rules all the time. Is he worth the risk? Hey. I'm no perfect woman, and Milton is not the finest bloke, but we do our best to get by. That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. Hmm. It's required. You've been a nurse for how long? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. Well, change your attitude. I don't like your attitude, Nurse Hawkins. Pessimism can be as lethal as the epidemic in times like these. Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. How is the situation here? How would you describe the situation in Pembroke Hospital? Well, we already know how it's terrible serious. it is, but we'd like a second opinion. It's wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? Farewell. Right, let us make our way to the old morgue. I trust this is the way. It's locked. Bullets! Why do I feel like I'm going to require those?
This is not going to go well, I think. Right, find some useful medical ingredients. Let's be off. This entire place seems off if you ask me. Someone's left the lights on. Curses. How about you? One thing we've found at least. Some currency. Balls of Mars. Fortifiers. <laughs> as popular as they are ineffective. But they do contain iron tartrate and that might prove itself useful. Hmm. I suppose this is the equivalent of a dungeon then. You know, like how in some RPGs there are locales that qualify as dungeons in a modern setting. These skulls feed from corpses and the husks of animals. They're not after them. I wonder why they're giving me lots of ammo when these enemies are resistant. Ah, 
Now hold so, I require your blood. Mr. Connor's injuries don't match the report. I'd better look into this. Well, we are surrounded by skull, but sure, let us uh, conduct uh, an autopsy. The chest was originally open to perform the operation. The sutures are clean, but the chest has been reopened. Traces of a pinkish foam at the corner of the lips. Some sort of Drug overdose, perhaps? Multiple abrasions and scarring on the arms and legs. Old and distinctive injuries of a sailor or a fisherman. A puncture over the left lung. Possibly a chest tube insertion. Not the cleanest work, but I think it was successful. Signs of internal bleeding. So, Dr. Tippett's anesthetics were incorrectly dosed, causing the patient's death. And then, he tried to operate on him again. Tippett has made an egregious error. It's time we talked. Hmm. It's locked. Well, we shall handle that at another time. Ooh. We shall use that at a later time. Be gone. Oh, what's this? A boss fight. Huh. What's in God's name? Is indeed a method to your madness, sir. Hmm. 
You were indeed a formidable foe at first, but I figured out your pattern. These skulls can be so ferocious. Oof. I'm not sure I can defeat them without becoming stronger. Oh, to drink blood is so tempting. Sodium hypochlorite. Dangerous to administer, but efficient in the proper dosage. Right, so let us go back there. Uh, can we craft here? Treatment for bronchitis. Right, let's be off. always delightful. I've always wanted to say that to an opponent. You know, I wish to say, you fool! Right. Have I gone the right way? Right, I shall just dispose of those two in one minute, right. Off with you! Here we are. I apologize for the delay.
I shall need to find that Clay Cox gentleman and uh, feast on him at some point. But for now... Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, yes. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. It seemed pressing. Diseases, diseases request. Good evening, Miss. I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. I have to go now, sir. But don't... Yes, I know. Right. Let us see what Mr. Swansea desires. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea. But my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead? Unalive? Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. Well, I'm a living paradox. There is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Epia. There's no need to apologize. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out, a spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accept. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Right. We shall uh, speak with her, and then I shall conclude the episode.
Blue took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind. The blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. <coughs> Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speak it's concerning you. your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a van. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. Swansea fancies vampires? So it seems our Dr. Swansea does indeed have a fascination for creatures of our constitution. Dr. Swansea is a remarkable man. Dedicated, one might say, obstinate? He spent years compiling our bestiary. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Hmm. Well, I have questions. I have your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first, prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. Very well. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Hmm. Please continue. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Very well, we shall end the episode here. Uh, thank you for watching, everybody. Um, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You may follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and also feel free to send me an email at uh, stillwinstonilvj at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and uh, do take care. Cheerio!